every day. <laughs> and, and they can just see it on you. I want you to know today something is happening in your life. The Bible says, how does faith come? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Something is happening to you right now. It's like you're having a suntan on the beach. You're not trying to suntan. I never try to suntan. But when I get out there in that sun, boy, I come back a little bit darker. And something is happening right now. So John, Matthew shares with us the insight and the illustration that Jesus' private ministry moved over to his public ministry. So now the crowd comes. He has compassion on the crowd. He begins to minister to the crowd, and we know how the story ends. Everybody's hungry. He feeds 5,000 people. I want you to know that faith will allow you to be outstanding in private and in public. You can have an outstanding private life. That was time in my life. You get one of those books, you can read about any of it. But there's a time in my life I had a great public life. As a preacher, as a business owner, great public life. And private life spiraled out of control. So it's one thing to be successful in the way of Steve Jobs, who created so many things. Anybody have an iPhone today? He's created so many things. And this new movie is out is talking about how he failed what? Privately. I'll tell you one thing about faith. Faith will allow you to be outstanding privately and publicly. When we take who we are, whether it's a lot or whether it's a little bit in the eyes of the world, when we take who we are and put it in the hands of God, we can be outstanding in public and we can be outstanding in private. I mean, what a life. But let's go a little bit further. And as you're turning to Luke chapter Let's go to Mark chapter 6 first. There's a story of Joseph. Joseph was a man that was outstanding in private, and he was outstanding in public. Joseph was in prison, and he did some extraordinary things. Joseph was in Potiphar's house, and he did some extraordinary things. And it was that private development that set him up to be the number two leader of the world when he began to work in that political capacity. I want you to turn with me to Mark chapter six, and you're gonna see opportunity. If you look here, you're going to see opportunity. I want you to know that God is doing an amazing thing through this church. God is doing an amazing thing in Northwest Houston through this church. Surely he's working through other churches, but I want you to know God is doing some amazing things right here at this church. Something significant right here at this church. And I want you to see what he's doing in this particular word. Turn with me to Mark chapter 6, and let's look at verse 36, and then let's look at verse 38. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, you give them something to eat. So here it is, one of the disciples, we have all this crowd of people, Jesus have been te has been teaching them, Jesus, the Bible says, has been healing the sick, and here it is, they're at a place where they need human help. They need a human touch. They're at that particular place. And the disciples say, send them away so they can go buy some help. Send this problem away. And that's how the world responds. And that's why God raises up his people. That's why God takes an ordinary individual and make them, make them a deacon. God takes a super ordinary person and make them a preacher. A ridiculously ordinary person and make them a pastor. Because God raises up help in the earth. When people need help, where can they truly turn? We have a philosophy in society, and the philosophy says, go help yourself. So our philosophy, society says, I made it, you go make yours. Society says, I got a job, I take care of my household, you go take care of yours. And we're going to cut all programs of assistance, you go buy you some help. 
take this problem away from society because it's not society's problem. The problem is, is you. And you fix your own problem. You put your bootstraps on. You man up. You put a belt on. You go do it. There's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to go by. That's some super truth to that. But that comes a time in humanity, whether it's their fault or whether it's not their fault, when everybody need a little bit of help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, everybody need a shoulder to cry on every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, somebody just need five dollars. Have you ever needed five dollars? I said, just me. Yeah. You ever needed five dollars? Yeah. I, I can remember a time, Pauline, I was at the uh, gym and I took my nephews there. I won't say which one, but I took my nephews there. And so there's a locker room there. We playing basketball, and this time they're between the ages of 8 and maybe 13. Well, one of them decided to go in somebody's locker, and they took $20. So I came back to the locker room. There's this big old dude there. He's about six foot four, 380. Local football coach, don't play no games. And so I'm talking with him and laughing with him. He say, man, somebody took my money. He's angry. He's mad. I said, somebody took your money, you know. And he said, they took my last $20. Got to last me till I get paid. He just crying out. I got to put gas in the car. Man, I ain't got no money. And come to find out, it was my nephew. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Sometimes $5 is a lot of money, am I right or wrong? $20 is a whole lot of money sometimes. So, so what do you do when humanity needs help? God sends the church. That, that, that's what the church is for. Yes, the church is a gathered place where we worship God and, and we get strength from God. But no, 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 it's bigger than that. It's not about going and being around 20,000 people and everybody high five and hoo hoo and rah rah, and at the end of the day, they don't help nobody. That's not a church. See, a church has to help somebody, a church has to reach in their pocket. Pull out some yenum, money spelled backwards, and take that money and help somebody with it. That's how it works. Why do I need to pay my time? Because we need to take some money and help somebody. That's what the church does. It doesn't matter whether they cut every government program. Who cares? As long as God has the church. We are the ones. So over there in 38, 36, we see the world's response. Go help yourself, man. Go buy you some. 38, and he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. Now, the disciples said, go and buy. Jesus says, go and see. We are the innovators. We are the ones who look at a problem and we see an opportunity to express the love of God. Yeah. That's what the church is. That's what we're called to do. We are called to invest our money, to invest our time, and to invest our talent so that somebody in people, so that somebody can see the love of God on display. Yeah. Yes, somebody need to see it. When we had the fall festival, it wasn't about how many people was here. It was that there was one mama who was all by herself. She came and had an amazing time with her children. Now, what about when we did the back to school? It wasn't that everybody needed a backpack, but somebody needed a backpack. It wasn't that no one could afford a haircut, but somebody didn't have any money. And so when they could get a free haircut, and a free backpack, it's not simply trying to grow the church, it's showing the love of God to the community. Yes, sir. And we can keep on going down the list of how this church wants to serve. I remember when we did the Thursday night meals and we had a meal time. To me, it was a time for us to fellowship and talk. There's a guy who came and he still comes sometime. He pulled me to the side and said, Reverend, I don't have much to eat at home. 
Old skinny fella. He get him two or three pieces of chicken, big old thing, red beans, fruit. He sit there and eat it all. He said, thank you. When we stopped it, he said, Reverend, I don't know if I'm going to come back to Bible study. He said, I must be honest with you. I only came because you had free food and I was hungry. Well, I'll make a long story short, he come every week. Am I right or wrong? Come every week to Bible study, hadn't missed yet. And we have, don't have any more food to give him. But that's what the church is. We ought to go and see. Not the preacher. Not the pastor. In this illustration, Jesus is the pastor. He's always the pastor. And, and in this illustration, the disciples are the members. Who did he tell to go see? The members. What do you see? One of the great things about the Catholic Church that I love, not many things, but one of the things I love is the way they do missionary work. Because what they do, the people rise up. And the people say, this is what's on our heart, and this is how we want to serve. They don't ask the church for no money. They just ask the church for the blessings. So they write a letter to the church, and the church says, okay, you can do it. Anybody ever heard of Mother Teresa? The church didn't pay for that. That was her assignment in life. That was her mission in life. The church just blessed it. And she allowed God to use her life to show kindness to all. And others got a part of that fellowship and showed kindness to others. So what I'm trying to say is, Stacy, what do you see? Al, what do you see? Jason, what do you see? Natalie, what do you see? I was in the study back there, and I was studying, preparing to come out. And I says, wow, Natalie had a powerful song choice this week. I love the sound. I love the songs that she saw. And we experience them because she saw them first. What do you see? See, it's time for us to change lives to the glory of God. Yeah. And the only way we're going to do it is when you have the courage to communicate what you see. Yeah. That's what City of Faith Church is about. That's how City of Faith Church is different. When I first started pastoring, it was my understanding, I am to have a vision as the pastor and you to help me. Now in my maturity, it's flipped around. What is your vision? Because I am here to help you. Not you help me, me help you. That's what it's about. It's not about you serving in the choir, you being on the usher board. You know, we got boxes we're going to plug you in too. It's about what is your personal purpose in the earth? What is your assignment in the earth? What gets your attention? What bothers you? What moves you? How can you be an impact to the glory of God in the earth? And let's allow you to do it. Natalie's song today, I think she was in the right spot. Stephen was on the sound today. Very few people saw him. He's in the right spot. Tommy right now is messing with the camera. He in the right spot. What's your spot? There's a spot for you at City of Faith Church. And I don't mean to sit here and simply listen to me. That's not your spot. That's a part of it. But that's not why I ask people to join. Your spot is not simply fill out your envelope and put your 10% in the basket. That's part of it, but that's not your spot. Your spot is what you see. So he tells them to go and see uh, amazing opportunities in life. There's a story in 1844, Horace Wells, during this time, nitrous oxide was more so a party type drug, if you will. Nitrous oxide was something they would use to have laughing parties. And so Horace Wells was a dentist. And back in 1844, they would have laughing stage shows that would go around. And everybody would take this gas and talk real funny, and boy, they would just cut up a little bit. And people thought that was an amazing thing. Well, one day, an individual took too much laughing gas, if you will. 
and he broke his leg, damaged his leg badly. He didn't even realize it. Now here it is in the midst of pain, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of harm, they discovered an opportunity. And they began to realize that nitrous oxide had the ability to mask pain. And so it was one of the earlier drugs used for anesthesia. And then a little later on, there was another individual who was in a lab. Individual was in the lab and he was working with bacteria. Individual was working with bacteria. And then in the midst of his research, he decided to go on vacation. So the story says he leaves and goes on vacation for a few months. When he comes back, you know what happened. The sink is full of bacteria. I mean, it's just filthy, it's nasty. And he says, ah, who wants to clean this up? So he has to go through the process and cleaning it up. And then he looks on the Petri dish and he sees one spot that has no bacteria on it. And then he realizes, you know what? That's where I was working with that particular chemical. And that led to penicillin. Penicillin began to be used something to fight bacteria, but it was in the midst of a filthy sink that he saw that opportunity. It was in the midst of someone that he loved having a broken leg that they saw an opportunity. I want you to know life hurts, life can be tough, but I want you to know in the midst of all of that, God will show you opportunity. And faith gives us the ability to see some of those amazing things.